At the moment, the trilogue negotiations are taking place on the TCO regulation. It is the regulation on prevention of the dissemination of terrorist content online, which could introduce upload filters and also include the one-hour rule. One of the shadow rapporteurs, which are responsible for the terrorist uh, regulation is our MEP, Patrick Pryor. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Patrick, what, uh, can you first please summarize what the TCO, TCO regulation is about and what is the problem with this regulation? So, TCO regulation is a proposed EU law on the prevention of terrorist content online. So, it has a very far-reaching aim to prevent the publication of, of terrorist content. And that, of course, means a huge problems for internet users and um, freedom of speech online. First of all, a one-hour rule um, is supposed to make sure that um, operators of internet hosting service will delete terrorist content within one hour of receiving an order, uh, even at night time or during weekend, which, which is hardly feasible for many uh, small and uh, non-commercial um, companies, but also for uh, startup startups, for example. Um, furthermore, uh, the proposal wants to introduce compulsory upload filters. And that, of course, is wrought with problems because um, they again and again uh, block legitimate content because of the way that, that technology can't tell legal from illegal content. Uh, then there is a danger that legitimate users of, of, um, of terrorist content, for example, photos of um, attacks, uh, could vanish, um, such as media reporting, um, such as critical posts on terrorism, uh, public awareness raising, scientifically dealing uh, with the phenomenon of terrorism. All those are legitimate reasons to use uh, terrorist uh, content. And um, finally, there is a danger that um, cross-border removal orders, meaning that um, a government, the government of Hungary, for example, could order the removal of content in any other EU country, even content that is legal in that country, um, uh, result in the risk that um, these removal orders could be used for political purposes, so um, ministers could be tempted to uh, present themselves as uh, law and order people uh, by, you know, taking down lots of content or um, a website, and that's a great danger for freedom of speech online and also for our possibilities to receive information. After Article 13, the Commission is now trying again to introduce upload filters. Why are we private still regarding the use of upload filters as very critical? Well, first of all, they are ineffective. They are so easy to circumvent. If, if upload filters just use hash databases, uh, they can be circumvented by modifying a video just a little and it won't be recognized. Uh, that has been repeatedly done to spread uh, terrorist uh, material. Uh, secondly, uh, upload filters never understand the context of a publication, which means that if you publish an, an image or a video with, um, on terrorism, it can be propaganda if it's done by a terrorist group with the intention to, to provoke people to, to support terrorism, but it can also be legitimate media coverage. It can be a criticism of terrorism. Uh, it can be scientifically analyzing how uh, terrorist groups work or, or public awareness raising. And upload filters will never understand the difference, which means that they systematically overblock legal content. And uh, finally, um, review procedures uh, that are being offered are not really uh, helping. Uh, these problems because um, it takes too long, hardly anyone will really take the trouble and um, even if in the end something is uh, restored, some content is restored, it will usually no longer be up to date so nobody will care by the time that uh, a mistake is corrected and um, therefore upload filters are a great danger uh, to our freedom of expression. They um, make it 
difficult for small services to, to comply. They can't really uh, afford to, to develop such technologies. And it could result in some services blocking EU users just because they can't satisfy these requirements. You have already mentioned the one hour rule. What is the problem with this rule? Yes, so um, um, individuals or um, non-commercial organizations or, or small startups uh, may not have the resources to answer to these orders uh, within one hour, even at night and uh, during the weekend. And therefore, um, there is a danger that they might actually just simply shut down uh, their services if they can't comply because they face substantial penalties uh, if they repeatedly don't uh, comply. And um, it also disadvantages uh, European uh, internet uh, operators in comparison to those uh, uh, global um, internet corporations. They will have the staff to, to comply within one hour, but we really want to grow an, a European internet uh, industry and environment. And uh, this is really counterproductive because it makes it impossible for um, European uh, operators to, to comply. Considering that both the Council and the Commission are not willing to amend the one hour rule, how could we make sure that this does not create any burden to small and medium enterprises and also to startups? Okay, so the least we need to do is create exceptions for um, small organizations who cannot comply for um, operational or technical reasons. Um, you know, if they follow orders as soon as possible, it, it is really has to be good enough um, to prevent them from having to shut down. I believe that now it should be clear for everyone why the TCO regulation is problematic. So what can everyone do to prevent the TCO regulation? So this regulation will have to be um, decided by the European Parliament and by the EU national governments represented in Council. And at the moment the EU Parliament is standing up for our rights and for the uh, internet community, but the national governments and the Commission uh, only care about effectiveness and removing, preventing as much as possible. And therefore, uh, how you can help is contacting your national government, your Ministry of the Interior, um, or the permanent representations of other governments here in Brussels uh, to tell them about your concerns. And another thing you can do is to raise public awareness and attention on this uh, up upcoming regulation that's being negotiated. For example, by discussing it with your friends and family or posting about it on your social media accounts, uh, by making videos uh, on the issue or sharing my blog posts uh, on, on Tarek, um, or even uh, raising the attention of, of local media to, to this issue. Um, we need this attention and debate in order to create a public pressure on um, the council and the governments to take our needs into account and make sure that our fundamental rights and freedoms and the needs of the internet community are respected. Okay, thank you very much for this interview, Patrick. So more information about the TCO regulation and also about what you can do against it can be found on Patrick's website and also by clicking on the links in the video description.